What is up everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video. Today we've got a bunch of great Nintendo Switch and also RPG news to go over. It's going to be a packed show, but before we get into that, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first. Now starting off with this first bits of information, I'm very excited about this because I love these RPGs and we're finally getting some spiritual successors to Wild Arms and Shadow Hearts, some of my favorite classic RPGs of all time. So let's go ahead and get into these Kickstarter campaigns for both of these games. Now we have an official launch date of August 29th, so coming up pretty soon as of the time that I'm recording this video. So Wild Bunch Productions, a company founded by the core team that created Wild Arms, and Yuki Kaze, a company founded by the core team that created Shadow Hearts, have collectively announced spiritual successors Armed Fantasia to the End of the Wilderness and Penny Blood, a double Kickstarter campaign to fund both of these large scale Japanese RPGs will be launched on August 29th. And man, there is just so much awesome in that one paragraph. I'm giddy with excitement, especially for this spiritual successor to Wild Arms. So, Armed Fantasia to the End of the Wilderness and Penny Blood will share a mutual funding goal of $750,000, which will secure a PC release of each game, while a nearby stretch goal will secure ports to the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and the newest Nintendo hardware at the time. So, the next generation Nintendo Switch, it seems like, whoa, whoa, big stuff going on here, guys. So, the early bird combo pledge level will allow early backers to pledge for both games at a highly discounted price. Now, the Kickstarter campaign will also integrate a combo meter that affects stretch goals across both games. A pledge for one game will not only add to the game stretch goal meter, it will also contribute to the shared combo meter that fills up with support from both games. Wow, they're doing like a whole video game type of thing here. Now, the more the combo meter builds up, the more content that is unlocked across both games. By backing one or both games, backers will help build both titles and support other backers. Clearing goals will share content and talent across each game. This is probably the most ingenious use of Kickstarter that I've seen combination-wise ever with these combos and both games. But to be honest here, $750,000 for two supposedly large-scale Japanese RPGs doesn't seem like a lot. So it seems like they are banking on a lot more people supporting this than you know what they have out here but i guess just for pc base level seven hundred fifty thousand dollars cutting out the middlemen i guess that's what you would need but obviously they're gonna want a lot more than that to truly make the game that they are going to need based off some of this gameplay footage that you guys are already seeing or about to see at this point now wild bunch productions yuki yuki kaze will also host a weekly community game in which one of the heroes from each game will face off against a monster. Campaign followers will see five different social media based goals related to an attack, special move, or block, and each monster will have a set number of hits it takes to defeat them. Defeating a monster clears that community stretch goal and upgrades the rewards chosen during pledges. If one game's team is not able to clear its goal by not hitting a monster enough times, any hits or cleared goals from the other game will carry over, allowing one community to help the other. Now let's get a little bit of some overviews here. Armed Fantasia to the End of Wilderness tells a dramatic story that unfolds in a world hurling towards destruction. Players take the role of a group of pathfinders and with their trusted arms in hand, embark on a perilous journey across a sprawling western punk wilderness. Now, there's a lot more in terms of what they're trying to do there with the setup and everything, but I do want to get into some of the dungeon exploration and also the battles. So, dungeon exploration focuses on utilizing each party member's unique gadget, 
players must switch between gadgets to solve obstacles standing in their way, embracing the sense of victory when they finally open a particularly tricky path. Traps and treasures lie in wait across both the world map and its dungeons, requiring both the character's skills and player's wits to solve and escape in one piece. Now here's how battles will work in this game. Battles in Armed Fantasia to the end of the wilderness will be turn-based but maintain a quick tempo based on the cross-order tactic system. Successive character actions play a key role in the chain order and disruptive force breaks interrupt enemy turn order, creating engagements filled with tension and suspense that will push players to carefully consider their battle strategy. So awesome stuff here i'm really liking what i'm seeing with this new game this armed fantasia i love what they're doing here now let's get into penny blood just a little bit so penny blood presents a world twisted in gothic horror and nightmares imagery rarely seen in japanese rpgs in penny blood players will follow the story of matthew an investigator who embarks on a dark international probe through the iconic roaring 20s amassing allies and confronting trauma in a world twisted by cosmic horror malice and mayhem not necessarily as much as what i'm looking forward to the arm fantasia game is a bit more my style but i'm still interested in this one as well so there is more stuff when it comes to the setting and what they're doing they have a whole slew of things to go over and talk about if you guys want to check that out and there's big developer deep dives it's all on gamatsu you guys can check that out unfortunately there isn't a ton of footage when it comes to what they're doing but i do think that this will ultimately end up being pretty good but it's probably going to take a while before this comes out because they're talking about the next nintendo hardware so it's probably going to be at least two years minimum that we see these games here at least probably maybe even longer but we're gonna have to wait and see but what do you guys think about this spiritual successors to wild arms and shadow hearts Goodness gracious, anything is possible then at this point. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here, guys. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on the sales and the domination of what's going on in Japan with the Nintendo Switch, Xenoblade Chronicles, and everything. So the Famitsu sales report from August 15, 2022 to August 21st, 2022 showed once again a clean sweep in Japan. 30 titles all 30 nintendo switch and we're seeing that the legs of xenoblade chronicles is probably the strongest we've seen in the franchise and what i mean by that how does it do after the first number of weeks because we're heading into a month of xenoblade chronicles 3 being on the market and it's still in the top 10 now of course it's not up at the top here as you guys are seeing the top 10 but it is still in the top 10 and sold another 6714 units so that's what you want to see you want to see those thousands of sales for this style of hardcore japanese rpg whereas in the past like with xenoblade chronicles the original or xenoblade chronicles 2 or xenoblade chronicles x you would see it up there at the top you know within the top 10 usually the number one game and then after week two or week three it would pretty much fade from pretty much the top 30 sometimes even the top 10 within the first couple weeks but now we're at this point and it's still in the top 10 and based on how it's selling right now it doesn't seem like it's going to fall out of the top 30 anytime soon so you like to see that combined with the japanese sales where i still think that it's in the top 10 or so with eShop sales as well so xenoblade chronicles 3 is doing fantastic but to see some of the other evergreen stuff i love to see monster hunter rise plus sunbreak combo i love to see what kirby and the forgotten land is doing mario kart 8 deluxe continues to sell like crazy i think the booster pack is definitely helping propel that game and continue on nintendo switch sports the game that apparently nobody cares about still being the top game sold i think that that game is going to sell for an extremely long period of time that game is going to be selling for a while i don't think it's going to be out of the top 30 in japan 
probably until the next Nintendo Switch Sports comes out. No, I'm exaggerating there. But yeah, it's doing really, really well when it comes to long-term sales because it didn't open up at some type of mind-breaking type of number, but it's consistently found itself in the top five and everything. So very good across the board and crazy to see that the Nintendo Switch is once again kind of dominating with all 30 spots. Now, when it comes to system sales, last couple weeks, there was a pretty big boost, but things have definitely slowed down across the board. But the Nintendo Switch still was the top selling system with over 58,000 units sold. And the next closest was the PlayStation 5 family of systems with about 15,000 sold plus. So definitely no system is even coming close to what the Nintendo Switch is doing. The domination is still kind of continuing there and it probably will, especially after the price increase for the PlayStation 5 in Japan. So what do you guys think about the sales here? How do you feel about Xenoblade's long-term sales still in the top 10 and of course still doing well in the Japanese eShop as well? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here, guys. We've got some more information on a very exciting RPG on the treehouse that we had recently, and that's Harvest Stella. 30 minutes of gameplay footage. We've got new information on the combat systems, and to me, I love to see games like this. I don't care if it's not my favorite type of game. The B tier new RPGs or the B tier RPGs need to come back. I've been saying this since day one on the Nintendo Switch. We need to see more of those B tier, second tier type of franchises, not huge investments, but just cool games that people can go out there, pick up and have fun and play. Not everything needs to be a super triple A Final Fantasy graphics are the best thing in the world game. So that's why I'm excited about Harvest Stella. You can pick up and play in short bursts. You don't have to worry about it being some type of crazy experience or anything. So let's talk a little bit more about some of these features in the game and Harvest Stella itself. So we have the Quietus. Now, a season of death that comes at every turn of each season, crops wither, and the dust of death prevents people from even walking outside. It is said that the duration of Quietus is getting longer each year. Now, you have the world to explore, plenty of different towns. You have different type of dungeons and locations. There's going to be boss fights. You have your daily life mixed into that, right? Completely normal, where you can plant vegetables, grains, fruits. You can grow all of them, but you need them because you need them, because you need them to power yourself up and go out to the dungeons and kill unicorns. <laughs> yes, unicorns and stuff. It's actually pretty cool. I like what's going on here with it. Plus, you also have comrades, people that can join you, friends that can have you battle. So your party members as well, if you need a bit of help clearing a dungeon or getting through certain parts. Now, I do want to talk about the combat a bit more and what they had to say. So combat during battles switch instantly between a wide variety of jobs like the fighter who unleashes quick sword techniques and shadow walker who deals lethal blows with twin swords or the mage who specializes in magic attacks to be victorious take on strong enemies by targeting their weak points and then eliminate them with a powerful double break attack so harvestella due out november 4th worldwide for pc and the nintendo switch and i like that they revealed that there's going to be classes in there i think xenoblade's got me thinking that the class system is probably the greatest thing ever but i've always loved the class or job system even going from bravely default or the old school final fantasy so the fact that you can switch between them and have that type of variety to take advantages of weaknesses and hopefully difficulty levels as well is going to be one thing that's going to get me very excited to play harvest Stella when it comes out this November away from the killers I guess in October there's just so many games coming out so many great RPGs and action games it's great to see when it comes to Nintendo Switch and what this system has put out this year so far and I cannot wait to jump in to more Harvest Stella and other games as well so what are your thoughts when it comes to Harvest Stella and the gameplay here plan on checking this game out at some point let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here, guys. We do have an update on Azure Striker Gunvolt 3. Five months of free updates coming, starting with the new title update 1.1.0 right now at this point, guys. So, Inti Creates will release five months of free updates for Azure Striker Gunvolt 3, starting with the version 1.10 update on August 25th which adds a new playable character, Kieran XX, and the new mode, d -Nizer mode. Future updates will add new bosses and more before closing with the additional story epilogue, Adams. So, we've got a lot of details. You guys can check it out. Link in the description. Going over everything when it comes to the roadmap. I'll also put it up right here for you guys. So, August 25th, 
which is already here new playable character you guys can go out there check it out and the new mode late september we've got a new boss new mode trial mode and more late october there's a new boss and more late november there is a new boss and more december 2022 there's additional story epilogue atoms online scoreboard and more so there's quite a number of things for this game and remember this is nintendo switch xbox and also xbox series x and s now in addition to updating the game with new free content a new downloadable content pack will release around the same time with a two-week free download campaign you can download it in the first two weeks to keep the downloadable content for free in the event that the game releases for additional platforms all available updates will be included on the release so maybe a playstation release later down the line now if you want to learn more about the individual dlc that you can pick up right now for free updates you guys can check out the link gamatsu has it there but azure striker gumball has always been a franchise that i've actually liked quite a bit i've beaten all the games up until this point i do have a review code sitting for me with azure striker gumball 3 so i definitely will be checking it out at some point Point. so what are your thoughts on the new azure striker gumball and this announcement of free dlc coming let me know in the comment section below all right and moving on to the final topic here guys monster hunter rise sunbreak expansion title update 2 launching this september the gift that keeps giving for monster hunter fans so monster hunter rise sunbreak expansion title update 2 will launch in late september capcom announced in a new trailer showcasing huntable monster flaming Espinas. So, the update will also add several other monsters, including rare species and powered up monsters. The Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak expansion is now available. Nintendo Switch PC via Steam. Check out this dope trailer here. Monster Hunter is a game that I wish that I had an infinite amount of time and I didn't have to worry about a bunch of other games and a bunch of other stuff because I think I'd just be like a Monster Hunter man. I would just sit there and play Monster Hunter all day if I could because I've done it before. And it was addicting. Just like Xenoblade is sucking me in. Back when I was playing Monster Hunter, man, it was crazy. So I need to get back into it. I love what they're doing here. This is how you get it done on the Nintendo Switch. Other third-party developers, do this. You'll make a ton of money. Take your biggest franchise. Take whatever you have and make a specific version for Switch that has good support, that is worth it. And I'm telling you, people will go out there and buy it like crazy. We need this for Final Fantasy. We need this for a lot of other big RPG franchises that aren't on Nintendo Switch or don't have their main big built for the Nintendo Switch game on there. Get it done, developers. Trust me, you're not going to regret it just like Capcom has it. So what do you guys think about all the different topics that we discussed here? let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and we will see you for the next video peace